Last May, a six-year-old in Massachusetts was diagnosed with cancer. When his family found out that they couldn't pay for the treatment, they turned to the local news, who wrote a story about the boy and eventually got the whole town to help by giving him high fives and wishing him good luck in heaven, kid. Now, this story is obviously fake. Or so you would think, until you realize that more than 8,000 people donated to a fundraising campaign for the boy, hoping to save his life. And yet, stories like these aren't even the worst of our issues nowadays. With celebrity drama, natural disasters, and Trump somehow still having a Twitter after four years, almost all of our media is corrupt in one way or the other. No longer do we get our Sunday papers with simple facts and recollections of events. Rather, we consume our media from sources like Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and TV. And when we are always consuming, there are bound to be a few errors. But more than that, if we can't even agree on our facts, then there is no chance we will ever agree on the solutions. The root of our issue comes from the fact that media as a whole has experienced a radical shift in purpose. In the past, it was meant to inform the public on what was happening in the world, so that they could use that information to formulate their own opinions. However, with the rise of technology and instant communication, media has become a political machine, consuming money and feeding people what they want to hear, rather than what they need to. There is a profit motive involved, and more eyeballs equals more revenue. And yet, it's not even enough for media to just feed us the news. They have to dress it up and make it look appetizing, so that competition doesn't take our attention away. So at this point, what do me and the doctors at the World Health Organization have in common right now? None of you really want to be listening to us, <laughs> but there really is a point, and I promise it really is that simple. To compensate for this inevitable rise in competition, media outlets had to focus more on getting attention rather than producing quality content which explains why legitimate organizations have no chance. And at the end of all of this, well, quite simply, Twitter, clickbait, and as our president loves to rant about, fake news. Instead of learning about things that actually matter, we get headlines like coronavirus has killed 99% of the world population. Despite what we might consider common sense, people click on these stories, read them, believe them, and then spread them to other people they know. I mean, take the most widely spread Facebook headline of 2018. Trump's grandfather was a pimp and tax evader. His father was a member of the KKK. The issues with this story are clear. A group mistakenly confused our president with his father and grandfather. And yet... <laughs> and yet, the real reason these types of stories thrive is because we want to read radical content that captures our attention. The last true effect of this rise of technology is that we as a community have become incredibly selective. It's very attractive to be able to read whatever we want, whenever we want, in whatever method we find most enjoyable. But you know what else is incredibly attractive and not scared of trying? Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> and so, our media outlets can't just rely on absurd headlines and crazy stories. They have to rely on our more controversial nature. They rely on our political and moral views. Take Fox News. Almost everyone knows that Fox is strongly right aligned, tailoring their content to a conservative demographic and producing content critical towards the left. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have MSNBC, which does almost the exact same thing, but to a completely different audience. This manipulation and divide in what should be simple facts has two alarming effects. First, the middle ground has been eradicated. And second, news outlets are focused more on convincing rather than actually educating. But first, there is no middle ground for us to debate anymore. Take something as hot as gun control. We hear endless praise for yay guns or boo guns, but eh, guns? This left a no man's land that is rarely explored ever, if at all. And second, people on either extreme seek out content that reinforces their beliefs until we end up reading things like InfoWars, who last year criticized our Democrats for changing the water and turning the frogs all gay. <laughs> but why does it actually matter? Well, quite simply, the world is on fire in a number of ways, including literally. When faced with massive issues such as climate change, political scandals, or even selecting a new president, 
This type of media poses a major threat. If we don't know how bad the Australian bushfires are or what's happening in the Middle East, there is no chance we can help to solve the problem. And honestly, it's likely that we make it worse. So at the end of this, I know you are all probably really, really bored. This is monologue show, not speech, theoretically. <laughs> but it is important. So once in a while, go read the news. You might read something completely outrageous. Or hopefully true. But at the end of the day, we don't know. And those are just... <laughs>